I suppose I can do it. There you go. Yeah, well done. Thank you, ma'am. All right. All right. All right. She wants to look pretty. She wants to look pretty. <laughs> okay. Okay. I've been in this neighborhood since 1963. I went to Stafford in the first grade. I used to yes. walk to school across Old Highway 90. Yes. And my fondest memories of walking to school was passing by El Capitan, which used to be on the corner of 36 and 90, where the new Stafford is located at now. I went to the old Stafford. But they don't know what El Capitan was. The Capitan was the, uh, an old drive-in movie theater. And I remember they used to have it blocked off. You couldn't, you know, it was like taboo to go see. And you, well, on our way walking, when I was in the first grade, there was this ramp that we'd always, by, we'd always go up and down that ramp like two or three times. I was late to school a couple of times. It was just fun running up and down the ramp uh, about Capitan. And then later on in the future, of course, I went to Edgewood. And uh, we, uh, we used to kind of sneak on that ramp on the, uh, we had friends that lived right there behind it and we used to sneak a peek of the movies whenever they were. Uh, <laughs> they did. <laughs> so that was back back in the day. Uh, that was back in the day. And did you have a certain story that you would like to share? There's many, but what really I recall is that when I went to Edgewood, there was one room that had all the air condition that I remember it was the library. And I was amazed, I really was. And not until I left Edgewood and then I went to college and then I started, you know, seeing, wait a minute, other classrooms had air and this and that. <laughs> no, really, and, and it just, and, and I was thinking, okay, what happened to Edgewood? Why is it that, you know, we don't have that? And I remember at that time hearing other schools were doing this and doing that. And again, what about Edgewood? Well, if we're talking about Edgewood, we're talking about plastic microscopes when we were in biology classes. Yeah. Yeah. Books that we couldn't take home because there wasn't yes. enough and yes. we'd have to leave them in the classroom. Yes. But about Old Highway 90, fast oh forward gosh. to, uh, let's see, 1979, I opened a business on the corner of 38th and Old Highway 90 West. Uh, actually, I had it right next to Frank's Taylor shop. Yes. Uh, it was a combined building from uh, the old owners was Foons. People remember Foons, where now uh, Mike Korsman has 4M Auto Supply, but Foons was my uh, the proprietor of that business. And then there used to be an old ice house and everybody who ever grew up here in the 38th ice house. Everybody just used it 38th. And uh, they, it went up for sale. And uh, I bought that building, so that's where I started my build, uh, my business, Race Food and Vegetable. So I was there for 27 and a half years. Just so happened that at the time I was ready to sell it, my children were too young to take over or weren't interested. So I did sell it to actually a cousin of my brother-in-law. So it kind of stayed in the family. And it used to be Race Food and Vegetable. And to tell you the truth, generations. I saw generations grow up in that. When, when, my first, when I first opened, I had third graders come in and they would buy candy. And I remember when I left, I had their children that were in the third in. grade coming in. Yes. And, um, and it kind of stayed in the family because my brother-in-law's cousin, Eddie Palayo, bought it. And uh, he named it Eddie's Fruit and Vegetable. <laughs> so that's my story, oh, Highway 90. Could you talk to us about this picture? Oh, I love this, this picture, may I? The, yeah, go ahead. Okay. This picture is very dear to me because when my husband Ray opened the business, at first, of course, he didn't have a lot of clientele. So it was slow, and this is our oldest, Jason Ray Gonzalez, and he's sitting on one of the watermelons at the store from Ray's. And that, to me, means a lot because it's, this is where it all started in a sense with the business. It was small, but it grew just as our family grew, so did the business. So it really is... Uh, when I first opened it, it was strictly fruits and vegetables. Uh, but as time went on, people started asking me for canned goods, to make, you know, tomato soup, and whatever they asked for, I started getting cigarettes, beer, and it grew into a convenience store. And it did well for myself for all the, uh, for the years that I was there. It was very prosperous. Except I just it, it was, it was time to move. Yeah, it was to move on. on. I was, but it was the, it's, the it's a lot of work. It, it got to a point that the clientele was in clientele and the whole family. And, when, and we knew them by by their first names and, and here and there or maybe somebody was coming in, don't forget your mom just called, you still have to take this as well. It was family. It was family. 
Can you tell me a little bit more what Highway 90 was like when your business was open? Like, well, you the, thing about, the, the thing I like to busy. say about oh, Highway 90, yes. Let me put it this way. The demographics changed as the years went by. When I first opened, uh, chili, tomate, cebolla, that was a staple of the people that that were around here. All the all the grandmas and all the wives would use that. They would cook with that. They would actually physically hand cook a uh, meal for lunch. And, and uh, that was a staple for, for that. And as the years went on, you know, as the economy grew, worse and worse, of course, changed. Then you had uh, the, the older people dying off. That's the demographics of it. Younger people moving in, or not moving in at all, but the younger people, it was a two-family working situation because of the economy. The mother and the father were both working. So instead of buying the avocado, tomate, cebolla, chile, they would, cilantro and onions, they would go to churches, McDonald's, McDonald's, Wendy's, Wendy's, and that kind of that kind of died off. It, 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 it changed, so it was hard to stay stand on the produce aspect of it, and I had to lean more on you know the staples, and it just uh, changed. It changes in all neighborhoods, but uh, I love old Highway 90. Like I said, I was uh, I grew up here since 1963. And I was blessed to be able to come back to my neighborhood and to uh, re-meet some of these people. And they are the, the salt of the earth. I gotta say this. The people, the Hispanic people in this neighborhood, the best. The best in town. I'll hold them up against anywhere in town. No, it's true. It's true. Because of the deep roots here in San Antonio, especially here in the area of Old Highway 90, you could not have picked a better place to come and ask for stories. You will hear and find a wealth of stories. Not from one, two generations. It goes way, way back. They will share stories to where it was just a street and you didn't see all these buildings oh, and it started to grow. I can remember, I can tell you this story about my father. Oh, yes. My father was in the Air Force yes. for 20 years. He went to Lackland, 1951, when uh, he was in uh, basic training, the bus would stop at 24th Street. We're on 38th, or right here, 36th Street, so he had to walk. But he said he didn't have to walk that far because if you had a uniform on, they'll pick you up. This is 1951. Yeah, San Antonio. Yeah, San Antonio. And uh, they would take him to Lackland. I mean, he would just, it was almost like that, to pick, get picked up. Because uh, that's just the way it was. And I remember when we would leave to, because uh, my mom has family in Piedras Negras, so we would go all, all, all Highway 90. We wouldn't, there's no other way, all Highway 90, to go to San Binal and take, take a left, take a left. And um, that's the way it was. I remember all Highway 90, Rodriguez Park. That is, that was a staple. Camargo Park was right off of 90. Well, the Levi Strauss is. Oh, later, later on, on but, it was still but there. still, still there, yeah. Old Highway 90 is Old Highway 90. It's not. I don't even know what the name of it is now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Were the parks a place where, like, you gathered with your friends and family, or what kind of things did you do at the What's parks? That now? Uh, oh, the the, the, the Rodriguez yeah, Park birthday parties. It's it, it's got a big pavilion. Yes. We've we've done uh, we've done our our children's birthday parties. Well, we have uh, two born in November, so we killed two two. When, Two parties in one. Yeah, so it had to be big. So we have a we rent the pavilion there. We've had our uh, fundraiser for our high school reunions at Edgewood. They have a bigger pavilion than that, where it's people can use it. It's tremendous for a group, a large group of people. But uh, Rodriguez Park is also a staple here on All Highway 90, and uh, I remember going there from way back when. I had, that little creek, when I was little, I thought it was a river. Yes. I went back and I went, what is this? <laughs> Just yes, a little bitty creek. Yeah. And our kids saw that. And uh, I'm taking my grandkids to it. So, Old Highway 90 is Old Highway 90. Just say, oh, how we are, or 90. Oh, yeah, we know where that is. We need to do this and do that. So, yeah, it really needs to be in the books. You know, this is part of the history of San Antonio. And it has to be in there somewhere. They can't forget it. They can't. And that's 
one thing we need to stress to our own children. Don't forget where you came from. Don't yeah. forget where your roots started. Because that that has made you who you are. It's made you the person that you have become. how we know you has basically made us who we are. And even my kids, when we used to live right off of uh, on Friday, um, which is just yeah. two blocks around, and we did move out of the neighborhood, yeah. but. All my kids worked at my business, so they, they consider Old Highway 90 part of their it's home. Of their they grew up in on, yes. on Old Highway 90. So basically, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, basically, this is our home. So we come back. We come back as much as we can. So you guys mentioned the drive in El Capitan. Yes. And you mentioned foods. Are there any other places that don't exist anymore that you want to make sure people know about when they talk about Old Highway? DNR? Was a was a big independent grocer that was right here. And what about Ben Rodriguez? Ben Rodriguez right down the street. was right down the street. And what was that business? That was a, a independent supermarket. It burned down in night. It burned down in that location in 1975, and then they moved. Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly was there on 90. Um, El Camaroncito oh, with whoa. the Devil Wolf. <laughs> That's, that, don't stay for the, the, the don't yeah. stay for the last dance. That, that's a legend in itself. It's an urban legend. Yeah. That supposedly some man, no, a woman or a man, we're not on. Supposedly that there was a dance at the Camarillo and adultery was taking place. And that this, <laughs> that's right here. And this lady is dancing, and she's dancing. And supposedly that when she looked down, she saw instead of feet and shoes, saw hoops, and so. She ran out screaming with the devil herself. So that just kind of. But it's because of the adultery aspect of it. So, and that was the last the, dance at the camera. Well, it was well. always at the last dance that they would see the hoofs. I mean, who it's knows? It's just the urban legend trying That's to keep the, the adulterers away from there. <laughs> it is. But it, it, some swear by it. Who knows? What about other places that you hung out? Either as like young adults, maybe before you had your Jerry, kids? Well, Jerry Queen. That's oh, it's it, yeah, it, it, Oh my God. Jerry Queen's right here on 90, babe. Well, okay, but yeah, this is this way. I remember it opening in 1974. Oh, my one, my yes. friend, uh, Ernie Guerra, uh, God rest his soul, but God, Ernie Guerra was one of the first employees there at Dairy, uh, Dairy, at Dairy Queen. Uh, and of course, the El Bravo used to come here for all our music. The, for the, the records, for the plastic, yes. It, it wasn't no this, CDs. It was no CDs or discs. No, no. It got to 8-tracks, yes. Yeah, definitely, <laughs> the 8-tracks. People forget that. Yeah. Is there anything else that you wish I had asked you about Old Highway 90 or something that you want to, a memory you want to leave us with? Memories really would be the there was always something going on. Always something going on. I mean, I don't know. And I wish people would remember it as Old Highway 90. Yes. That is a changed right. name of Enrique Barrera, who may have been a, a, a good and decent man. Which is fine, but, but we believe this has to remain Old Highway 90 the West. People's choice. The people's <laughs> area. Old Highway 90. And that's what it is. It's Old Highway 90. And it needs to come back. It needs to come back. And that's, that's my yeah, that's personal our story. opinion right there. And we're sticking to it. There you go. <laughs>